Hi, I'm Brock Luganbill, uh, former owner of Heavenly Ham and slash Honey Baked Ham store in St. Charles, Illinois, and uh, FBCG church attender. I'm Nancy Luganbill. I'm married to Brock, and we have three kids. We've been here in Ecuador for six years, and before that, we lived in the Geneva St. Charles area for about 10 years, and we're attending First Baptist Church for about six. We owned Heavenly Ham. We, we owned that store for, for about nine years, and I guess during, during that time, um, you know, I, I, was, I would characterize my life as happy. We, we had a little lake place over in Indiana, and uh, I remember being out on the boat, and uh, the kids were swimming around the boat, and Nancy and my feet were propped up on the back of the boat. I was just floating there, watching the sunset, and I just remember thinking, who wouldn't want to be me? You know, I felt like my life was perfect. We had a good life, but yet for me, something was still missing, and I remember laying in bed one night, and I just thought, God, is this all there is? And I'll stay here and do this at that that's what you want me to do, but is there something more? And right then, God just spoke to my spirit, not out loud, but he said, just wait, I have something for you. And about three months later, we noticed things started to really happen in the business. Things changed, there were some unusual circumstances that made it really clear to us that we needed to sell it. And so for me, it was great. I was so excited, I knew God was doing something different. I know it was hard for my husband. I felt like Job, I, I just felt like my the world was crashing down. I, I didn't know why all this was happening. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. I was breaking out in hives. And I remember being up early, early one morning, and I was just crying out to God. And I remember I was face down on the living room floor, and I was crying out to God, and I was pounding the floor, and I said, God, what do you want from me? You know, what do you want? And for the for the first time ever, I actually heard an audible voice that said, I got what I want. And I thought, wow, that, that's interesting. Um, if God's talking, I'm gonna get my question answered. That's really not what I wanted to ask. So, so I said, so does that mean you want me to sell the store? And I heard out loud, I will be with you. We started talking about, well, God, what, what do you want us to do? And we put the business on the market. The business sold in 45 days. Attorneys on both sides of the deal said, we've never seen a deal happen this fast. We started talking about, okay, what are we gonna do next? At that point, we had actually decided to take our family here to Ecuador on the, on the family trip that summer. So in the summer of 2006, Nancy and I came down with our family uh, to visit El Refugio on a, on a short-term team with First Baptist. Towards the end of the trip, we went to the jungle, and that night in the jungle, I just kept waking up. I remember waking up just in the pitch blackness, and, uh, and I was thinking about eternity, and that, that I would be spending eternity w with God, and, and, I, and I heard God's voice again, and God said, I need you to take some people with you. And I just think to myself, I really hope God is over in Nancy's hut talking to her, because this is huge. So I just kept waking up, and I thought, God, if this is where you want us to be. I, I just had this desire deep within me that somebody would just come up to the side of my bed and speak to me. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I have to tell Nancy. Like, I, and, and I can't wait. Like, I, ca I can't wait till the sun comes up. I have to tell her right now. And about four in the morning, I hear the other missionary lady in our cabin yanking on the covers, trying to wake me up. And she said, Nancy, get up, get up. Brock's outside, he needs to talk to you. And, and she comes to the door and she's like, what is it, what is it? I said, I've got to talk to you right now. And he just broke down and started crying for about two minutes, he couldn't speak. And finally he said, you know, God just spoke to me in a really powerful way and I really feel like this is what we're supposed to do. So, so, so we arrived in Ecuador in April of 2008 we visited Casa Gabriel, which is a home for former street kids. And uh, I've skated for 36 years now. And I saw a couple boards, a couple skateboards in the, laying in their yard. And I asked, does, does anybody skate with these kids? And they said, no, but, but they would love it. So I, I threw some old boards in, in my bag just with the idea of hanging out with former street kids and teaching them to skate a little so, bit. So that's what we started doing. But, but as I started hanging out at the local skate park with them, I just felt God scooping in just tons of, of kids that had that had nobody pouring into their life. Really what I saw and, and what I learned as I talked to the skaters was, was that they didn't really feel welcomed in the church. And so w one morning I, I'm, I'm having devotions and the Lord tells me, you're going to build a skate park. It 
So over the next probably six months, with the help of the skaters, we, we started building ramps, and that's how Ladoka started. It's, it's just been amazing to see God work. You know, some people tell us, you sold your business to go be a missionary. Nope, we, we had no idea what we were doing, and we didn't know how long it was gonna take, and, and God only showed us this far in the future, and regardless of how much we wanted to know, way down the road, that didn't seem to really move him to reveal any more than we needed to know at any one time. In the jungle, when the, when the Lord told me, I need you to take some people with you, I didn't know exactly what that meant. But now that, that he's shown me um, what he wants me to, to do here, it makes a lot more sense. There are hundreds of, of skaters now, and a lot of them are lost. And, and God is giving me the chance to speak into their lives, to share his love with them, to, to draw people to him. We've told the skaters, this isn't just a skate park. The skating is awesome, the fact that it's a refuge is awesome, but the best thing you can take from this place is a growing relationship with Christ. We, we share the gospel. For me, the gospel means hope. It means hope for change. It means hope for forgiveness. It means a new life. It means everything. I feel like that's why God brought us here to just share that hope. It's just so awesome for them to see Christ's love. And, and, and I had a kid a couple weeks ago tell me, we, we can't believe that God cares so much about us that he gives us a place to skateboard. That's like, you know, no, nobody cares about you that much. So, so it's, it's just been really neat to see God work.